good evening let's start we had previous session when we talked about innovation we went through the innovation trail we also uh, saw in some way how to approach innovation we called that discipline of innovation and of course we had done in our earlier session the basics of entrepreneurship what really the entrepreneurs are looking for and what they want to achieve and how they go about it so let's build on those things now and let's go ahead so as i mentioned we talked about innovation we talked about entrepreneurship but what it is that you need so that the entrepreneur can bring about innovation that's what we need to take a look today so we can say that innovation and entrepreneurship are the two sides of the coin one cannot exist without the other but what is the glue that holds these two things what it is really that make it possible that there is innovation that entrepreneur is really working on and able to bring it to the marketplace into the practice so what is that that is necessary to make this happen yeah yes what do we require what does the entrepreneur require that innovation can happen yes we saw quite a few things last time yes demand yeah that is on the market side yeah but demand is not going to be easily available demand will be available only when the innovation is brought about that either you gave something new or you made something which was required in a different way that right that's what we saw earlier those three c's yeah demand is required but how does entrepreneur manage to achieve that innovation to meet that demand is that right that's what you are looking for so what do you require yes excuse me yeah you want to answer gap very good there is a problem for there is no solution excellent yeah that's what we need to do but then how do you solve such a problem team yes what else what really is the most basic thing that we need so we need to have i think some very important uh, inputs a problem where there is no solution and we need to find that out but how do you do that you can find that solution only if there is something some element of creativity because otherwise it would have already been solved but the very fact that the problem is there it's not being solved is that there it requires something beyond the current situation and it requires a new approach a different approach for which we require the creativity some yes of course that's right yeah that's what exactly we are going to see that so that's what we say that unless there is creativity we will not be able to solve that problem which is today persisting which requires a solution and for which we are thinking of bringing about a change through innovation which would meet the demand that some of you said that the demand has to be there so what is creativity yeah we will we'll come to your questions so when you say creativity what does it mean we have heard this word very many times we heard many times people saying that creativity is very important so what really is the creativity yeah any answers on that what is creativity yeah out of the box yeah that's one element that's something which is not being done today and can you approach that can you manage to do it out of the box certainly one thing what else yes you see a lot of examples of creative people 
they have done something. What is the most important thing about that? That it is something novel, something original, which people had not seen before, but they are able to look at it. So the most important thing in creativity is that you come with something original which was not there earlier, but you are coming with something which is not there currently. But it's not just enough that something is new, something is different. It must have in the context that we are in, either in education or business, that it must be not only it should be novel, should be original, but should be appropriate for a situation. Out of the box, yes, but it must address that major problem. So therefore, we define creativity as something which requires either getting new knowledge or rearrange connecting knowledge which was there but which has not been tried together in the combination and when that happens, we can create something which was not thought about, but which today can give us completely new benefits or improve our solutions to the problems that some of you talked about. So basically we are talking about creativity, not in a imaginative or pure imaginative sense. We are talking about it, which will address the problem, address current situation and which ultimately improve at least some areas, some benefits to some people who will give us the demand and who will be willing to go for it. So the question is, we are all creative. Is there anyone here who is not creative? Each one of you has got creative elements, we have got some creative attributes. But what are the issues that we have got here? So basically, people are creative, but do all are creative in the same way or they are creative in very different, very unique ways. So what we find is that there are very different ways in which people are creative and they express the creativity in, <coughs> in very different formats and in types. So basically what makes people creative are these four basic traits, four basic capacities and these are a talent, knowledge, values and interest. When you say talents, what are the example? You say that somebody is very creative. What talent we are talking about? Yes? What talents? You say that this person is highly creative. Yeah? Any examples? When you say talent, what do you think? What makes, is, makes us think that someone like Ravi Shankar or George Harrison are creative people, they have got special talent in the musical domain. What it means is that while there are so many people who are learning or playing music, these are really someone who are going beyond what is there. Or knowledge, the physicists or the scientists who are able to come with new theories of matter or energy, definitely they are the one who have gone beyond the current situation. Can values be creative? Yeah, what are the values people have? What are the typical values people live by? The values of truth, integrity, is that right? Would they be in certain situation become creative and interest? A lot of people have got interest in various hobbies and various 
pursuits which they have would that really give us some way of being creative. We will see those examples. So, the point is that we have all some sort of abilities and there has to be some capacity to be creative, but we express them in very different ways. What each one of us is doing is a very different thing and there are four basic styles in which people are creative and what is that? So, we say that there are four styles of people who are pursuing their creative capacities and these can be visioning, exploring, experimenting and modifying. What is visioning? When you say visioning, what does it mean? That you are looking beyond what is there today, you are visualizing things which are not there and typically where do you find such people who are visualizing things which are not there? One of the important domain is the what is SF? In literature, what does SF tell us? Science fiction, is that right? It really is looking not today's, but looking in 2050 or 5000, whatever it is, is that right? So, we had a good example. Anyone heard Arthur C. Clarke? Yeah. What did he write? Yeah. Arthur C. Clarke, what did he write? 2001 Space Odyssey, one of the most famous novels where he came up with the idea of space travel. In fact, in the 40s, Arthur Clarke came with an idea. What was that idea? that we could launch satellites in space and with those satellites circling the earth, we will be able to have communication over across the entire globe and across entire time and distance. So, this was a visioning which was there more than 70, 80 years back which Arthur C. Clarke came up and today that vision is true. Today we have got communications through satellites, but even before launching of any rockets, 20, 35 years back, Clark has that imagination or visioning. What is exploring? You go some places where people have not gone before. It could be a physical place like Mount Everest, which Hillary and Tenzing conquered or it could be a place in the science and technology domain where you have not tried those things before like going into MEMS and nanoscales. Okay? So, that is the exploring into domains either physical, natural or scientific and technological domain, experimenting, bringing things together which have not been tried about and modifying things substantially than what they were, yes, yeah, yeah, something. We will we'll see just now, just the next slide will tell you that, but in the meantime you can think about it, you think it is not possible, values cannot be creative, yeah, you have got some example, sorry. All the legends we had, okay, we will we'll see that, we will come to it. Sorry? Yes, both are part, yes. What do you think? Yeah, imagination is not enough. 
we saw right in the first slide it has to be in the situation which will give us some concrete result you can't just dream and say i am creative you need to be beyond that you need to give some basis for that when arthur clark said that space travel is a possibility what did he have behind with him he had some german experiments where they were thinking about rocketry is that right now it was not really ready but he could foresee that if germans can launch rockets can you use these rockets for something different can you really have rockets which not just go out into space and destroy something can you really control them so it was not pure dream it was there was a basis in that some scientific basis and could that be used for an application which was not thought at all but which could be attempted okay so that's what when you say that visioning doesn't mean pure imagination or just day dreaming it has to have some link some basis to the possibility so therefore we see that people are creative in very different ways and there are various areas in which they are creative and what do we find that many times they could do something which was not thought of which was not really well known but it could be possible that they are doing it without themselves knowing about it and therefore even in your regular jobs sometimes there could be a situation which we need to address and therefore if you do it perhaps you will not be able to realize or record it that you had done something which was important so basically when you talk about creativity we see that there are about 7 8 dimensions along with people are very creative and what are those idea create what is the idea creativity do you hear sometime conversation that a person or b person is really full of ideas you tell that person any problem or any issue he or she will come up with half a dozen possibilities on that so there are people who have got what we call idea creativity or there are people who have got created in the material way how much how they will be able to organize matter how they will be able to do with things rearrange things or come up with different things or there are someone who is very good at the organization management that means if you want to do something so we say that if you are going on an expedition you would say that if you want to really do it let this person manage it they can do it very well or creativity on relationship that means somebody is able to figure out how things are interconnected how they are related what is the links that we can find out or someone can do event creativity that means one can organize a major happening all that is required for that which is not a easy job but some people have got that ability the inner creativity something like the saints or people who think about life or philosophy they are able to come with that and finally spontaneous creativity the moment someone sees a problem they can come with a solution immediately so there are various ways in which people are able to express their creativity so therefore we say that there is a capacity for being creative there is a way in which people are creative and there are expressions in which people are creative so we have got remember we said talents knowledge values and interest visioning exploring experimenting modifying and the seven type of creativity is that we saw so we can see that all these combinations can give us different types of creativity you can combine one or more elements from these three and you will have people who have got different way of being creative yeah now we'll come who was that value creativity yeah now let's see if we got examples in which people are really 
creative and let us find out. Do we see people here? So, let us ask the question are they creative and if they are creative in what way they are creative? Can we guess them all of them? Yes, we all know Mahatma Gandhi, who is this one? No, Da Vinci, Leonardo Da Vinci, what about this? Aryabhat, Newton, Michael Jackson, M. A. Hussain, the artist, Einstein, Steve Jobs, Hussain Bolt, Ramanujam, and Rinath Tagore. Is that right? Yeah. So let us ask them, ask ourselves. Are these people creative and if they are creative, in what way they are creative? Is Mahatma Gandhi a creative person? Yeah. What did he do? Value. What was the value he held closest to his mind? The value of peace and non-violence and he said, I will be creative by fighting the British fighting the army with big soldiers with non-violence and with peace. So, he came with a very different out of the box thinking which was totally against the conventional norms that if you want to fight a war you need a big army, you need to have armaments and weapons which are superior to the army against which you are fighting. As against that, Mahatma Gandhi came with a very different value. The value, he said that values are most important. It is the value of peace, cooperation, non-violence that will ultimately win the war and not the use of bombs or guns or armaments. So that is the way in which you can be created. What about Da Vinci? He was of course one of the world's most outstanding painters, artists who painted, what is the most famous painting here? The Mona Lisa, that was the plus he had several visioning that is in 1500 he had visions of aeroplanes and helicopters and machines which he had come up with. Sorry? Scissors, yeah, very practical. What about Aryabhat? Sorry? Knowledge, especially knowledge in the field of astronomy, gravity, Newton, all we know. What about Michael Jackson? Is he creative? Did he take the music to something beyond that was being done that, that time? Did he become a global artist? We saw that there is also talent. What talent we can have? Talent can be music or painting or writing. So we have got here outstanding talent, which also is the next one, M. A. Hussain. Again, outstanding painter. What about Einstein? Did he explore knowledge beyond what was there? Did he go beyond Newtonian mechanics and come with relativistic mechanics? So that's what was he contributed. He came with a what about Steve Jobs? He came with a computer for an individual as against computers till that time, which were only for the corporate or for the big companies. What about Hussein Bolt? What makes him the fastest person in the world? He has got enormous talent in the sports arena plus he also has got the technique which he has developed and for last three years he has been the 
world number one in the field of athletics or what about Ramanujam? Mathematics and came with formula, both had visioning and knowledge, which were even today, there are hundreds of scientists around the world who are trying to decipher and build on the Ramanujam's postulates which he had given in the field of mathematics. Lata Mangeshkar, does she have talent which is out of the ordinary? Can she do something for the, which will move lot of people? Has she gone beyond the, most of the commonly held musical limits? And finally, Runa Tagore in the art and the literature area, what has he, has he done? Novels, poetry, literature, which have been there now for more than 100 years and people are still impressed by that. I think every year we see half a dozen movies which are based on Tagore stories or novels. So people still connect after all these years with them. So all these people we can see that either by talent or by knowledge or by exploration or visioning they are able to create something which is not easy and very few people really can do that. So that is what we say when you say creativity, again it is not a concept which can be defined in a very rigid and rigorous way, but we can get the idea about it in a very different way. Like we say that the, it is the talent, the mode and the way of expression which can tell us a person is creative or not. So the question we want to ask ourselves is that are we, that we are creative, all of us are creative, but are we as creative as we want to be and or, or are we as creative as often we want to be. So that is the question that we have we have seen those four talents and the modes and all the expressions. So definitely each one of you has got some element of that. But with that you need to ask yourself are we as creative as really you want or when are you doing a job or doing something can you bring creativity to that job as often as you want to be. So therefore, let us go into the structure of creativity. When you saw these three people, all these people, there were three important things which we call the components of creativity. And what could this be? For being creative, there are three very basic things which are required, no matter which field you are in, whether in education or business or science or music or sports, three things that we require. What are those three things? Yeah? Any guesses? Yes? Imagination, okay, good. What else? Imagination, what else? Will that give us creativity or will require something beyond that? What do we require? Yeah? Awareness, very good. Very nice that we need to know where we are and perhaps where we want to jump or go out. What else? Willingness, okay, good, good, yeah. Willingness to? Willingness for what? One second, willingness for working hard or yeah, sorry, what do you say? Observation, very good, yeah. What else? So the first thing we want to have is that there has to be 
some basic things within yourself. The expertise, what we call here, is in a very broad term. Expertise in terms of all the talents or values that we are thinking about. So that is the first thing. You must have something within yourself in form of those things that we talked about. So that is the expertise which is most important. Second is that expertise has to be coupled with some way of thinking skills like out of the box you mentioned. That means you need to go beyond where we are right now. Is there something that you can do? And the third thing is, third thing is, someone said willingness. Third thing we call is motivation. That means not only I have got something in me, not only I can think beyond the current on that, but most importantly, I am charged enough, I got energy to really pursue it. So when you have got these three basic things, then only you can think about you are being to some way creative. That means even if you have only two of these things, what will happen? You have got expertise and you have got thinking, what will happen? You may not go beyond the what you are doing. It is just being planning something but not really executing it. Because you are thinking something, you know something but you are not motivated to pursue it. So that is not going to help you. Or if you have got only thinking skills and motivation, what will happen? You will require a third person who has the knowledge or the expertise for what you are thinking. It is not enough to have that. Or expertise and motivation, what will happen? You will be doing same thing again and again. You will get, you will be stuck into a rut. You can't really go out of that because you are doing same thing and not going beyond it. So therefore, we require all these things which are extremely important and only then we are able to get out of this and pursue something which is very different and very creative. The point is that do it, do it or if you are not doing it, what really stops us from doing it? That means we raise our expertise, we think in a different and better way and we are really motivated. So in today's class, expertise and motivation is not something which we will be able to pursue or follow. Today our main job is on the thinking skills that all of you have got already some knowledge, some expertise and each one of you is very well motivated. But it is the thinking skills that we need to address. So let us address on that. So all of our thinking, we are thinking day in, day out, all through we are thinking. But what really are the issues? When you are thinking for our usual jobs, our daily requirements, what are the characteristics or the issues with the regular thinking? We are all thinking continuously. So what are you thinking about and how are you thinking? That is the main question. Yeah. What do we think typically? We think about things that worry us, is that right? Do we think about that? Something is worrying us or think about things which will make either us happy or someone we love happy, we think about that. We think about to get the job done that today I need to finish this task, I need to get that done. So we are thinking continuously, but what are the issues of the regular thinking? In our regular life, our daily routine, our thoughts are really following 
one after another. That is, now this, now this, now this. So our thinking has got a very basic structure. And what that structure? That our thinking depends on what we have learned in the past, and most importantly, it exhibits the continuity on the past. and it is the knowledge that we have learned and the concepts which have been taught to us or told to us that's what we use to direct our regular routine thinking so is there any problem with this there is no problem with this because this is what we need to have if you are told if you are told someone a parent has told their son or daughter that when you come back from school this is the way you should come is that right or wrong it's absolutely right to ensure that the child doesn't get lost somewhere or come properly back home that's the way he or she must follow so our thoughts are very much affected by the environment in which we are living how the environment is in terms of hygiene factors in terms of people's behavior so we are all conditioned by that and we follow those things so in our daily lives this is what we do and it's very important that we do that because that has shown us that it works this is what if we do this way this is what we get but then we are talking about creativity are you talking about daily life when we talk about creativity we are talking about something beyond that and what is the most important part of this the last thing what does it mean sorry yeah it's really basically we have been told to do this way like we see when you see the horses what do we see they have got on their eyes the blinkers have been put from the eyes for what reason that they have to follow the straight and narrow path so for us also what our parents and those people who wish well of us why they have told us these things it will be safe you will not have problems which normally come if you deviate but what happens if you are only going to follow this your vision going to be restricted you will only see in that vision and also doing this it's quite natural quite likely that you will get stuck somewhere so when you are stuck then what do you do do you still continue with this thinking or do you change it that is the most important basic questions that we need to ask ourselves so this is where really the critical point critical issues come about our thinking has been whether you have learned for last 10 years 15 years 20 years it has gone through some very rigorous and rigid ways of doing things So let's do a small experiment on that. Let's start. What's your name? Aprajit. Sorry, Aprajit. Okay, Aprajit, you need to help the class with this. What we call normally, we are so much used to do things. We do things without thinking. Is that right? So let's do that quick experiment. Can you do it loudly? very good what was asked you have to say the shape but you should say the what happened
What is happening? There is some problem somewhere. Yeah? Can you help him? What happened? We were doing things like thinking without thinking because we have been used to do that. So what really happens if you want to put a more logical thing in that, that in our lives there are things which are automatic processing vis-a-vis -vis things which require certain effort to do that. So this is what is happening for all of us, there are certain things which are able, we are able to do without thinking and there are some tasks which will require special efforts to perform them and therefore there are certain things which happen to all of us not just Aparajit is that there is something called why it happened there are three things why it happened like this one is the speed processing theory what does that say there are certain things which are able to do very fast which we have been told from beginning and therefore, if there is an interference between things, the things which is more dominating like reading or speaking that will always take over. So therefore, because words are read faster than shapes are named, you are actually going for the words and not really the visuals. What is the second thing we have got? Selective attention theory. That means, when you want to answer the shape question, you have to pay more attention than normally that we need to give. And the last thing, response competition theory, that means how you respond to a interference or to a trigger, how do people respond. So each of these things are very important and it is very easy, the response is very fast when you want to respond to a word than to say it's Name. So you can see that we have been conditioned all our lives by our teachers, by our parents to go by the, what is the phrase you use in our life? You must go by the book. What is a book? Book is nothing but a collection of letters and words and pages. So is it bad? Of course it is not bad, it is very good, but it is good in the situation and context that has been created for and not for situation where we require different response. There are situations where we require something different than what we have been doing so far. So let us get uh, another volunteer. What is your name? Avinash. Okay, Avinash, can you help us? Can you read this? Very good. So what's happening? Is it 12, 13, 14 or it is 12, B, 14 and A, 13, C? What's happening? Immediately when you saw the context, you said that either you are reading a numeral or you are reading an alphabet. It could be that, you could be actually reading alphanumeric, but our mind now is condition, the moment we saw the three numbers or three letters, we said that this is what it is. Can you guess who is this lady? Sorry? So what it looks from far and what it looks when you go near can be very different. So our vision can actually play tricks with us, that is what we will see in the next slide. It is very famous, very well known, is that right? All of you have seen this optical illusion, when you ask that are they equal or bigger? What do we say? That the last line appears to be longest and this to be the shortest. 
but in practice what is the situation are they different size or same size or some bigger than other if you actually apply the scale you will see all the three lines are equal size what about these are these line convergent divergent or parallel what do you see we see that actually all lines are parallel but we seem to have the like we saw about the words and shapes we also see that we saw it in a very different way Though all of them are parallel so is there one single spiral here or there are two spiral in opposite direction sorry two spirals or one spiral what do we have got here we actually got four concentric circles but what the impression we get is that there are so the spots are moving and how many legs 6 4 5 8 sorry 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so you can see that when the background and foreground are interfering is difficult for us to the of course we all know that there are only four legs can't be more than four legs but if you just view it it gives you the impression is it moving it's of course it is moving but it is moving in your eyes it is not moving on the paper but in your eyes they are all moving and lastly which way is the person looking towards you or at right angles from you so what it says really of course they are all fun but the important point is that the way we look at things is not adequate and things can interfere like we had about the words and shapes and so also the vision and the foreground background and therefore we need to have the right way of looking at things which is very important we want to think in a better or different way so there is something which all of us need to imbibe which is not easily available and that is looking with a creative eye can you look at things not in the conventional normal way how do you see things how do you see things why do you see, th see things yeah would you see this in a dark room yeah so why how do you see things we require without light we cannot see things and the light must interact with our eyes for us to create a picture so looking at things is going to be very important and let's do that any idea what picture is this <coughs> sorry yes many have taken such a photograph yeah what scene is this most common scene sorry sunrise anyone agrees or anyone disagrees sunrise or 
sunset yeah in this case it is a sunset but sunrise would have also been possible what about sunset is it a very uncommon thing or very common thing every day all around the world the sun sets and sun rises is that right in fact the sunset is the world's most frequently photographed scene right now when you are here there are thousands of people who are taking picture of sunset it's a most commonly photographed so there is nothing about sunset but what happens some people say it's a picture with different beauty or different days but sunset from the earth is the most common thing what about this any idea what is this yeah yes someone is saying yeah sun sun clearly with the solar flare and the solar flare and the sun spots that is what you are seeing here is that right so what we saw was also sun and this is also what are these things yes yeah coral reef yeah you are right somebody said coral reef so you can see this huge variety of life forms whether aquatic whether it is terrestrial or whether it is animals plant human beings you can see that and what is here what is this this is the basic cell structure no matter what life form you are in all our cells are essentially with the same nucleus and the surrounding material that is there so what we are really looking at we saw four pictures and they are really looking at the same things but are they looking in the same way or in different way so that is what we need to understand so basically when you saw the sun in the first and second thing you are looking at it with normal eyesight and with a huge telescope used for astronomy is that right and you are looking at the live forms you are looking again normal sight but when you look at the cell looking at under a microscope so you can see that we are applying a huge range of looking at things and when you change the range the way the things appear also change so therefore how do you see things we see things with our eyes or if you want to give outside analogy it's a camera is that right the camera is something which can capture the things and therefore what do we see the camera has got the facility of either bringing things near or making them bigger and it is the capacity of changing the lenses and the settings which gives us we could not have seen with bare eyes the solar flare is that right but the camera can do that so the way of seeing is going to be very important for us and therefore we can manipulate the way things are and the basic manipulation can be lighting angle exposure so if you see photographers who are very well known experts shooters what do they have they have camera not just a simple box camera camera with all the zoom lenses and big lenses and photos that is there plus unlike us do they take photograph from a single location or they climb up and down or go from different settings and different angle and take the picture so that is what really distinguishes them from 
our normal way of doing things. And what is the most important thing? That they do they just take one side if you see any event or any sports or any game do you see what are taking one picture and going out they will take hundreds of pictures is that right and then at that time they cannot know but once it has been done they will know that this combination of these three four main things can result into a fantastic shot and then next day in the magazine or newspaper people would say oh that's a super shot but what has gone behind it is all this preparation and the way of looking at things. So therefore, when we talk about creativity, creativity is also we say is looking at things. Creativity means seeing things and how do you look at the things is going to be the most important thing. So the problem that you are looking at for which you are looking for creative solution, that is what our objective is. What do we have? It might need a focus on some point or might require a different perspective on certain aspect of the situation or the problem. So therefore, like the photographer is taking the walk around the scene and taking a photograph, we also need to take a mental walk around the problem to view it from different angles and then possibly come with a creative solution. And the mental walk is of course much, much more difficult than taking a physical walk and that is perhaps one of the reasons that we are not as creative as we want to be or as often as we want to be. So let us take an example, anyone heard about George Mistral, a Swiss citizen? So like hundreds of people, he also was taking a walk in the forest and what happened? His trouser and his dog, they had the burrs, what you call our, the thorns with a lot of pointers. So what he found that his trouser is full of these burrs and so also the dog's skin and dog's fur also are full of these birds. These are the birds which we see in forest and also some of the plants. So that is what all of us have been seeing, but then George Mistral went one step further and he said, let me look at really what is this and why it is getting stuck into my trousers or into the dog's skin. And therefore, he applied the microscope to look at the things. So he changed the way all of us are looking at the way we are seeing it and when he went beyond what did he find? He found that in this burr and in the trouser that he is wearing there are hundreds of connections, the hooks and the knots which are there. So he could have stopped at that stage, isn't it? Okay, this is the reason why these things are getting stuck into my clothing and maybe I should take them out and throw them out. But what did he think? He did not stop thinking there, he thought something different. He saw that this burr, this thorn has the capacity of holding fast, of remaining stuck there. So is there some way I can look about it? Is there some way where we require that there should be holding fast or things remaining stuck. So what did he do? He said, can I get material which will work like this burr and he tried various materials to do that and he tried cotton, he tried the material but they did not work the way the, the forest thorns were working. So ultimately, he saw that when nylon, when it is actually exposed to infrared light and then you view it, then there is a similar pattern of these hooks and loops there in the nylon. So therefore, he started working on that and finally, after long time, after 8 years, 
came to a situation where he could find out a process in which he could join these two things the hooks and the loops and he announced it to be zipless zipper you know all of you know now what this material is yeah yes velcro that's right so this is what but was it a straight forward thing from idea to a product how long did it take how long it took for him to do things 8 years just to mechanize the process many days to understand why it is sticking getting the material right out so you could say that it could it took more than 10 years from the idea of something working in a unusual way looking at these things looking in a different way combining things and coming with this solution so this is what we have got now in the nylon these are the hooks and the loops they are combining and this is what you get on the velcro tape which can apply to many devices appliances clothing and you get the bands that's the story of velcro any idea what is this sorry chase in yeah that's right so chase playing in zero gravity made possible because the pieces and the board are made with the velcro otherwise it would not have been possible to play that so that is the way that one person everybody who went to forest there are thousands of them who went there all of them had the same problems but someone had the vision to think about in a different way look at things from different angles think about a possible solution for a situation where you don't have to use what is the velcro that it will benefit compared to other way of sticking things together you can use the shoelaces is that right or you can tie things you can have buckles there are so many things we can do but today it has become a product which is used all over so therefore the creativity is not a straight forward thing it's a tortuous path it starts with seeing and the way you see and can you see in a different way which is most important then thinking about it and thinking beyond the ordinary way of thinking thinking with a mental walk thinking from different angles and then most importantly connecting okay this is what it is where it can be connected where it can go where can velcro really be used and then of course hundreds of experiments thinking is not it just the beginning experimenting but failing failing many times but not giving up doing again and again and maybe then there is a chance of new creation so therefore it's the way you look at things it the way you are thinking which is beyond your conventional thinking it's the way of connecting and experimenting and trying out things that can give you a chance of a new creation or a new venture so we will close by giving one example we made those three elements remember that what are the three components expertise thinking skills and motivation so then you can expect that there is chance of creativity so let us take one example any idea who is this yeah who is this you heard about him we are getting for a convocation who are we getting for a convocation 
सैटरडे सत्यार्थी या सो ही इज ऑल्सो सिमिलरली नोबेल पीस प्राइज विनर दिस इज मोहम्मद यूनुस एंड वॉट हैपन डिड यू हैव नॉलेज एक्सपर्टीज थिंकिंग वेर इज इज सिटिंग इज सिटिंग इन ए रिक्शा विच इज बींग पुल्ड बाय ए पर्सन बाय इंडिविजुअल दिस इज इन ढाका बांग्लादेश एंड मोहम्मद यूनुस इज एन इकोनॉमिस्ट ही हैड वर्ड इन बैंक्स सो ही हैड दी नॉलेज एंड एक्सपर्टीज अबाउट बैंकिंग वॉट इज द प्रॉब्लम वॉट इज द प्रॉब्लम दैट ही वॉज लुकिंग अराउंड दैट द कंट्री इज सो पुअर देर आर मिलियंस ऑफ पीपल हु आर जस्ट मेकिंग देयर एंड्स मीट बट आर नॉट एबल टू गो बियॉन्ड देयर पॉवर्टी और द सिचुएशन ऑफ डूइंग देयर सो दे वॉज देर प्रॉब्लम Did you have knowledge to solve the problem? Do you have the motivation to address the problem? Of course, he had the basic knowledge, but that knowledge told him that the poor people are not bankable. You cannot give money to poor people and expect to get the money back. So that was the problem he was facing. Did you have motivation? of course he wanted to help people but he found that the current banking procedures and policies and we are doing things has got no way to help this people so what did he do he experimented that he started giving very small amount of monies to very small people and told them that they should give that money back to him either in a day or maybe at the most in a week and he ran those experiments and what he found that the people were really extremely committed very prompt in making the payments back to him so he found that this is not something which the banks expect banks expect that if a person is poor there is little chance of getting the money back so then he set up the bank he came with a new model the gramin bank and what is the word which is being used most commonly now last 20 years is the inclusion financial inclusion that is can you ensure that people who are not able to get the normal services can they really brought to this inclusive situation and therefore he set up the gramin bank which is a very different bank totally different than the conventional banks and therefore he was able to give loans to 7 million people who never could have thought of getting any money from a bank and in thousands of villages and not only that most importantly the entire model the concept moved and to more than 100 countries are able to follow this mohammad yunus's model and change the lives of people which was never thought about so that is what when you say about creativity that's the example in terms of thinking motivation expertise and that is what we have got so i think we'll stop here today